Close your eyes, sit up straight. Focus on your breath. Try to be aware of the breath all the way in, all the way out. It's your guarantee that you're in the present moment. This is going to be your anchor. And you want to create a good space in the present moment so that when you do think about the past and the future, you bring them into a good place. You don't bring them into a place that's confined or tense. And this way you can look at the past and the future in all fairness and be more objective about them. This is that time of the year when they start making lists, the ten best of the past year, the ten worst of the past year. You might want to make a list of your own. Make your own account. How many times did you give in to anger? How many times were you able to say no and not give in? The same with lust, the same with greed, the same with fear. Where is your weak point when you do give in to things like anger? What is it? What's the reason? What's the allure, as the Buddha would say? What kind of things spark it? Where are your tender points? You want to know these things well. There's so many things in the world that we know. We have lots of information. All the information you get off of in Thailand I call Uncle Google and it's on you, it's on YouTube. There's that kind of information, but the information about what's going on in your own mind, neither of those know anything. You're the only one that can watch what's going on in your mind. And it all too often you don't pay careful attention, but it's precisely right here where you need to know. Because these are the choices that are shaping your life. You want to know where your weak points are. You want to know where your strong points are. The Buddha calls this atanyutta, having a sense of yourself. We're not talking about a mystical self here, we're talking about simply your own strengths and weaknesses. So you can recognize them. And when you know you have a weakness, so what can you do to protect it so it doesn't get excited, that it doesn't get sparked? Greed in particular, excuse me, anger in particular, that gets sparked very easily. It starts quickly and, and stops quickly, but like a fire, it can, in the midst of the time that it's burned, it can burn an awful lot before it goes out. So you want to see where are your weak points, where are your flashpoints, and what kind of thinking can you bring in to counteract them. The Buddha has you think of your goodwill as being as large as the earth, as large and as cool as the river Ganges, as large as space, which no one can write on. You want to have a quality of the mind that people's actions can't write on your mind. And when they can't write in your mind, then they, they disappear. They don't leave a trace, and they don't especially create any excitement or incitement to anger. Now we can cool down. They can do what the world is going to do what it's going to do. There are a few times where you can make changes, but a lot of times you simply have to go along with the world. But you have to learn how not to let your anger get sparked. Because when your anger gets sparked, you can't see clearly what can be done, what should be done. And that way you miss a really good opportunity. So try to keep your own anger account. And if you notice that you're giving in more than you're being able to resist it, okay, you realize you've got a lot of work to do. The reason we make these lists it's not like the world outside. They make lists so they can sell you things. What were the ten best products of the year? What were the ten best movies of the year? You have to ask yourself, when were your ten worst fits of anger this year? So that you can decide, okay, from now on I'm not going to give in to those things. This is a good preparation for the resolutions that people tend to make tomorrow. Of course, the resolutions don't have to be made only on January 1st, but since it is a tradition, it's a good way of using the tradition. It's a good time to stop and think. We're entering a new decade. At least we're putting a new number on the front of the tens. Whether the decade ends today or decade ends in ten years, that's a point of discussion. But for the time being, make use of the change in the year, change in the calendar. 
to be more careful about what you're doing and saying and thinking, more conscious of when you're slipping, and more determined not to slip again. <laughs>